Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. We've arrived in Mexico. Now checked into the country and um, everything is super easy. Now we're staying in Cruiseport Marina. They're super helpful. They take you and they do all the paperwork. Um, we, we, we literally were just there. <laughs> so super easy to do. So it was worth coming in here just for that. It was a little bit different to our Asian experiences where <laughs> all the offices are spread out over the whole of Asia. Here they're all in one room. Here yeah, and we're gonna do the rest of our boat jobs here. Made it safe. Everything's all good. Checked in to Mexico. All right, it's winch time today, guys. Just got to pull off the uh, windlass. I'm just about to lift it back here and pull it apart. Bloody beautiful day in Mexico. Nothing I'd rather be doing than repairing our windlass. I've just pulled it all apart last night. I won't bore you with all that. So I've had some major problems. We had four bolts that held the actual housing in. One was snapped and then I snapped one and two came out. But looking at all the gears, there's hardly any wear on any of these. So I had a little look at the electric motor. The motor looks okay, the brushes are probably 50% of their life gone. I'm just cleaning this up now, trying to get our face clean around here so I can just put a bit of Loctite on and seal this up. But uh, the gearbox was uh, empty, it had no oil in it as I suspected. When we first got to the vessel, the boat had sat for so long, uh, I turned it on to see if the windlass would work. There was no oil around it. The next morning there was oil everywhere. So one of the lip seals had failed, but that's okay. It's not like it, the anchor's been running without oil. Got a new seal kit when we're in San Diego. I'm just cleaning it. I've degreased it all. I'm just using some parts cleaner. Put it all back together. The to town and find two, I think they're three eight bolts. We are heading to town, looking for a bolt shop today. So we just went to this gem of a shop. They got exactly what I needed. The hole in the wall. I wanted a bolt slightly longer, and I got the slightest bit longer. It's even got the same stamping on the back. 304 stainless. It's not 316, but it's inside a winch. It's two bucks, guys. Stainless steel, couple of bucks. Same stamp. I've inspected, cleaned, and we're about to reassemble the main gearbox for the windlass. Um, all the teeth. There's hardly any wear marks on these, so that's a good thing. I've been over all the cogs, they're all good. Everything, it looks like brand new. There's like the minute little bit of wear on some of them. It's, it's hardly anything, so gearbox is fine. Just needs new lip seals. I've got my new seal kit here that I ordered when I was in the States. So I've got two lip seals to go on either side of the gearbox. And I've got one small seal where the worm drive is. And a few new little uh, ports and plugs and washers and sir clips. But I won't bore you too long of this little rebuild over a few days. So this will be one little task. It's the gearbox. I still haven't cleaned up all the parts up the front, all the main drive unit, the cogs and so on. I inspected this last night, which is our motor that attaches to the gearbox. At the back end here, the brushes, probably about 50% worn, so they'll be on the list to reorder. So if we do have a problem, inside everything looked all right. It has had a little bit of oil go in. Obviously, one of the seals in the worm drive here has uh, let a little bit go. Don't mind the screw, that's just how I remove them without trying to stick anything sharp around the edges. I put a screw in, and then I can just pull it out. 
I can see where people have damaged the face here a little bit over the time. It has obviously, someone's been in here prior to me. Uh, I noticed there was one little gouge that was quite good. You may see me using a screwdriver, but I generally just tap the edge. I don't actually go right through. There's actually a nice little gouge there, so hopefully that seals. I don't want to play too much with that because that's a machine surface, but I will use a 515 Loctite on that and uh, that should give me a seal. I was nearly tempted to make a gasket just because of the couple of nicks here and there, but I think we'll be right. That's about it. I won't bore you too long. Like I say, this is one part of the project. Another part will be mounting it back on, cleaning up. There's lots going on here. What would have happened? This is a lip seal again, I've just removed it. Obviously this is our old one. This has failed or the shaft is stuck to the lip seal. So after sitting there for so many years, we turn it on and it breaks the seal and oil spilled out all over the deck. So it's not like it's been running without oil, it's just we dumped the oil. And luckily, because we our visa was up and we had to go and we didn't have time to rebuild this. We didn't have to anchor, we made it from San Diego to Ensenada to the marina here. So that was lucky. We could have used it, but I'm glad we didn't have to. I didn't want to put unnecessary wear without a lubrication inside here. Let's get into this, put this back together, get all these new seals in, oil it up, and away we go. Okay, he's cleaned up most of the bits as best he could. It looked like they had the wrong grease. Nice grease, otherwise it gums up. Yeah, there's bits pretty worn, but there's um, I think there's a few bits missing, but we'll see how it goes together and see if it works. There's one bit that's missing. This bit's missing off the other one. So that thing there is not on the other thing. back together <sighs> it's just the temperature it must be about 4 4 30 because right now it just starts getting freezing cold all right so i've made a couple of backing plates this is where the anchor chain will run out of at the moment this part where the anchor chain runs was fiberglass and it was timber um, and the bolts that go through go through the timber. There is a thickening under the windlass, which is balsa coarse. I'm going to replace it with this, which is solid G10. So when the chain comes out and does rub around here, it's got a lifetime of rubbing to uh, get anywhere. It's only just going to touch it. And the bolts that go through also are going to be straight into, well, the top layer will be epoxy and then this will just be straight fiberglass G10 around where the penetrations come through. So I shouldn't get, even if they did leak water at some stage, they're not going to rot. So I'm just going to replace that. Both sides, one side's worse than the other, but I'll do both while I'm at it. So there's four bolt holes here, which will then be changed into the template. So this is going to be replacing that and then I'll tidy that up after. And there's no actual backing plate for the four main bolts that hold the complete windlass down. Even though it is quite thick here, I'd still like a backing plate on there. Tidy that up. It's a crappy job, but it's just got to be done. Very important part of the boat. We've had some extreme forces on the uh, this area of the boat. So I want that to be super strong, no rot and uh, no water ingress anywhere. It's tidy up time. We're servicing the windlass. Uh, so far it's gone pretty good. Now we're going to put this piece here that I've just made up. So all I've done is this is a piece of G10 solid glass board. Um, I've just, just put a sacrificial piece of cloth over the, over the top of this. So what I intend to do, this is going to be the hole where the chain comes out of. It would be nice to weld up some sort of stainless contraption and that, but this is what we've got and this is what's going to happen. At the moment there was a hole for the chain to uh, exit through to the windlass and they drilled through and they fiberglassed around the core and over the years the fiberglass is worn and the core was exposed so we had a little bit of rot 
So we've cleaned all that up. We've had it drying in there with the heater for a few days now. So it's all nice and dry. So what I intend to do is pretty much put this up inside here like so. This will be the entry and exit point for our chain. The, wind, the chain can rub on this solid glass for I would say quite some time being that what was originally on there was probably only an eighth of an inch fiberglass anyway. So I'm going to tape that in and then from the top I'm going to fill. So the existing amount because it's quite thick, it's quite thick the um there's like two layers of board up there where the windlass sits, so I'm just going to pour resin until it fills the whole section in. Once I'm happy and it's all filled in and the resin's run out into the little bits that were um, had a bit of rot, then I'll drill back through this and I'll die grind this out nice and we should have a complete fiberglass entry and exit point for the chain. A lot of the boat, like for ha for instance hatches and that, all these, what the uh, the hatches are screwed into, it's all tabbed fiberglass. So it's probably like four inches long and it's just straight solid glass before it hits any core. For some reason they didn't have it tabbed or have solid glass around where the chain was in and out. Maybe it was an afterthought or maybe it was a, an add-on at a later date, different windlass, who knows. But that's what we're going to do. Stick this in, fill it up, grind it out. It'll be solid glass. The core's fixed. We should be good. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> we're in the anchor locker. Business guys, enough silly buggers. What we have up here, this is, it's quite thick. It's even like so, it's like probably another two inches thick on the way out. So we had a little bit of rotten core here, which I've removed. We've had the heater in here, airflow going. We've dried it all out. I've made up this block like I described earlier. So this, if we made it right, should fit like so. So I'm just gonna glue this in like so from now. I'm gonna put a little bit of epoxy in. I'll tape that. So that's that, we'll get to work. Bella's made up a little creamy thickened mix of epoxy, which I'll just put a little dab either side. I don't want too much because I want the whole area to be one with epoxy. So I'm going to stick this up in here, mat it in, it's sealed up from the bottom, and then I'm going to pour from the top. Let's get to it. I really only want a little bit of this just to hold it. I want the epoxy to run more so than just sticking a bit of thickened epoxy in there. Just to hold it for now, give it a little bit. Once that goes off, it'll hold it in place for me. Probably a little bit runny, but that's all right. I'm gonna use a couple of screws just to hold this so it doesn't drop on my head. We used a fast cure on this. It's nice and flush. Like I said, I'm gonna glass this in. I might not even glass it yet. I might let that go off. So that's one of the four main bolts. This was just, I don't know what, it was a little hole, so I drilled it out. You can see the timber core in there is fine, but I've way oversized this hole. So what I intend to do, again, I'll just put a little bit of cloth over here for now, and then I'm gonna pour from the top and fill this whole hole up with epoxy. And the actual bolt is a lot smaller than that. So I'm gonna re-drill through the center of that and it should can give a complete epoxy perimeter around the bolt, which will have sealant, but if the sealant does fail, and in time, at some time it will fail, um, it's only gonna leak through the fiberglass and into the locker, so it should be fine. Nothing, it's just a hole that takes our power to the center of the windlass. So I will rub a bit of epoxy on that, even though it's raw timber, it does, it's not exposed to the elements, but I will seal it nevertheless. Anyway, that's, uh, there's been a lot of patchwork here over the years, probably different configurations of windlasses and so on. Yeah, I'm gonna come back in, I'll tape all around that, and then once that secures, or not even cures, once it sort of just sort of tacks off, uh, I'll go to the top of the boat and I'll pour down through where the chain holes are, where it comes out. Like I said, I'm gonna overfill it all. And then um, once that dries, I'm gonna then get the die grinder in there and grind out. And we should have two beautiful solid glass exit and entry points for the chain. And I'm gonna put a backing plate on there also. It's quite thick and strong, but I don't know. I think it's, it's one of those really important areas of the boat where uh, if you are caught in bad weather and you're swinging from your pick, uh, our last boat, even though it was ferro, we nearly ripped the front of our boat off. Uh, we're in pretty big seas and 50, 60 knot winds, and yeah, we, there was no way of even getting the anchor up, just hoping that the uh, boat didn't fall apart and uh, the windlass fly off or something, uh, which was quite scary. We had a snubber on our last boat and it actually flicked off 
um, while we're in the big sea. So all the the load transferred to the windlass, which is definitely not ideal, uh, taking bend shafts and do all sorts of damage. But also, if it's not fixed to the boat properly, you can lose the whole lot or rip part of your uh, deck up. All right, our two main holes. I'll let that dry and I can fill it from the top side now. And I've got our four bolt holes. I just stuck a little piece of cloth over. It's just sacrificial. I'm gonna just fill from the top, re-epoxy the whole hole. Uh, once that's dry, then I'll drill them out and then seal them up and put the winch on. There's a few more little holes that were down here. I just opened up and I'll fill them with some filler. But uh, that's about it for in here for now. Right, uh, I'm out of here. We're gonna work into the night just for a little bit because I've sealed up underneath and I'm about to fill down through where the chain comes out. So I wanna fill down and fill into the deck. Now, I could leave it till tomorrow, but we had had rain a few days ago and I'm just nervous. Cause I've sealed up from the bottom now, I really don't want any rain getting in. And um, cause I don't know how I'd get it out to be honest. So I'm gonna get up there now. Bella's gonna keep the epoxy coming and I'm just gonna keep filling until our core and the surrounding area around the chain outlets are full and I'll fill up our bolt holes and then they can all be re-drilled out when we install the um, windlass again. But there are pretty important parts to get to. It's sucky work, but it's like anything, it is rotten. If you leave it, it only gets worse. So I'll show you what I'm doing up there with the head torch, but yeah, there's no daylight. So you can see under light what we're doing and that'll be it. Gonna keep pouring it in. All right guys, we're just gonna keep pouring it in <laughs> until we um, get this full. You can see down in here, I don't know if you can see, but as soon as I hit about this layer here, I know that the whole deck is full. Hole to fill that all one. four bolts here, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and I'll re-drill all that and that'll actually have a core around every one of them. So the core here, which I'm drilling through is epoxy and it's gone through the hole but it's also gone out into the core of the boat. So it's one solid piece of epoxy straight through now. So there's nowhere for it to leak. If it was done like that from the beginning, guys, we wouldn't have had a problem here. And I've filled them with epoxy, so I'll re-drill all them. And then when I go to seal, there'll actually be an epoxy layer around them. So even if it did leak, it's not gonna leak into the core. Perfect. I'll clean that up with the die grinder now to the width of this. I think it was like $80 for a, a hole uh, saw and we're trying to save every penny at the moment we can. <laughs> so I'll just do it with the die grinder which will only take me a minute. It doesn't need to be anything pretty even though it will turn out pretty good because um, the chain's going to rub over it over the years to come. So the main purpose is that it was sealed. The dog. Just a long process with the windlass. It's like, I thought, you know, I'd service the windlass. When you go to service it, you find parts missing, you find old wires, you find non-tinned sort of wires, and yeah, they were all looking sad. So I cut them all off. I'm redoing all the wires. All the epoxy work, fiberglass work, sealant work. It's quite a big job actually, but yeah, we're just um, hooking up some wires. We've only got one foot pedal. It is a dual pole motor, so it's forward reverse. I'm gonna run another wire. I have got a dual solenoid, but we've only got one deck pedal. So we'll have to get another pedal at some stage, but I'll wire it up so I don't have to remove the windlass when we do get one. Nah, uh, that's where I'm at. Finalizing the bits and pieces for the windlass. It's all come up nice. We've sealed it all. We've got a new backing plate for it. I haven't drilled that yet. I'm just getting some lengths on the cable and we're going to have a look at it. Lee looks like to this light on his head. It's like a footy head. It's like your head strapped up. Oh, it's got plates of footy, mate. Oh, you know, I used to play back in the day. <laughs> Cleaned up this mess in here. Like I said, we put all, it's got all uh, plates cut into here that I've fiberglassed in. I'm not, it looks what it looks like at the moment. I'm not going to sand and make anything look finished. It's an anchor locker but it's sealed up, that's the main thing. It's solid glass, all these penetrations now through here have all been oversized, re-drilled out, they're epoxy straight through. So if water leaks, it's not gonna go into any of the core, it's all sealed up. 
I've just gone and bought a backing plate. So I'm going to cut this out and then we can remount the uh, windlass. So we'll get a plate up over here. Ugh, never had one in here before, so I'll re-drill some holes in this uh, fella. We won't rip a hole in our foredeck if we're uh, ever anchored in 50 knots of wind with big seas. We can take a lot of pressure in this point. Otherwise, we're just relying on the glass to hold the bolts that was originally. I don't know. I like the idea of a backing plate. So, for what it's worth, we're getting a backing plate. So Bella and I are just putting this winch back together, using a bit of 4200. Well, there you have it. That's our first job in Mexico ticked off the list. Our windlass was back on and working. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.